Hello everybody, I'm Boaz Feiler, I'm an evolutionary astrologer and I'm here with the evolutionary astrology forecast for the week between the 17th and the 24th of November 2018. So, as you know, in this forecast or message, we go over the days of the week and we give a general assessment of the energetic sky and planets and space around Earth in an evolutionary manner. So usually this is a time that astrologers would be very happy because they could give you good news of optimism, of um, enlargement and expansion, both personal and on a collective level, of a coming to a broader understanding of things, of more wisdom and more self-assurance that things are going to be fine but <laughs> as you know everything is leading to something else and if we take it in a big frame then all the challenges and the expansion that we are dealing with now and that we are going to deal with through 2019 is really leading to 2020. It's leading to this year that at least astrologically symbolizes the beginning of something new on a geopolitical level, on an economical level, on a structural level. So the structures of society, the centers of power, are going to shift and the challenges and the triumphs that we are dealing with today are all heading in that direction in preparation for what is going to come but through this time when at least in the northern hemisphere we are heading into the darker part of winter comes a time of great optimism, comes a time that gives us the reassurance of guidance, the reassurance that there is a meaning to it all, a rediscovery of our personal and collective truth, making a sense or a renewed sense of it all, and rejoicing because of it. Very optimistic, but not everything is. So let's go through the weekdays and see how they play out. Remember, I talk in Central European time. So if you live in the United States, move it between 7 hours for East Coast back or uh, 10 if you're on the Pacific Coast. And do the other way around if you are in the Pacific Ocean, in Australia and New Zealand. 10 hours ahead. So... <clears throat> Saturday the 17th, we have Venus moving forward after her retrograde and we have Mercury starting to retrograde. So communication-wise, this isn't the greatest day. And if we have to transmit exact communications and messages on Saturday the 17th, make sure that it's understood correctly by the other side. My advice is... Go outside of weather permits, go into nature, do something artistic, do something meditative, do something creative, do something feminine, do something collective, go watch a movie, go see a show. <clears throat> it's a great day to employ the right centers of your brain. It's a great day to harness your imagination or spirituality. It's not such a good day to be in the office. On Sunday the 18th, we have both energy and a lot of fun. <clears throat> Sorry. I mean, this is a day that we could feel a little bit like children. We could feel like things come easier to us. We can feel expansion in our grasp. We can become optimistic that the road is opening up. That the road is finally opening up after such a hectic, turbulent emotional summer in the northern hemisphere winter in the southern we finally in the midst of dark winter here in the northern hemisphere get some relief get some sun 
So on that Sunday, we are getting some sunshine from Jupiter and the moon standing and trying to one another and the moon is going to try in a little earlier the sun as well Monday the 19th however is much more sensitive it's a day that we can act out from our own hurt place or hurt other people it's a time that we could be too judgmental over petty things and 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 really be too emotional about things instead of being adult and judging ourselves for judging others and that could be a trait as well we could be overly judgmental with ourselves as well and these are things we need to watch on that monday the 19th tuesday the 20th has a bit of a hectic uh, uh, energetic environment um, we could lose our patience with people on that day we could demand forward movement we could ask from ourselves or from others to move faster into the future to become better and more exact to hone our edge and maybe do something new the question that Tuesday is why not why Uranus and I'm talking about Uranus conjunct the moon Uranus asks why Are you sure that the answer is no? Can you explain why? That's Uranus inquiring. Many times producing an opposite answer. You know what? The opposite is true. That's a Uranian, Aquarian saying. And there's a kite in the sky on Tuesday, the 20th. And it's a day that we should regard or guard ourselves more uh, uh, clearly. Guard ourselves from overexpansion, from wanting too much, for asking or indulging too much, for being too extravagant or too sure of ourselves, from being too direct and untactful with people. We should watch that or being too obsessive about our ideas about our emotions and what's helping us on that day reach conclusions and wisdom is that kite in the sky there's a great kite in the sky headed by the nodes the lunar nodes and on the sides we have on the one side we have the full moon sorry we have the sun and jupiter conjunct and the sun is approaching Jupiter all through this week. It's going to be exact early next week. This is a time of great optimism and a great surge ahead. This is a time to take this life as an adventure. This is a time to dare. This is a time of broadening your horizons, your understandings and your knowledge of getting a new glimpse at the truth both your own and on a collective level of rekindling that journey towards understanding what this all means so we have Jupiter conjunct the Sun that's a lot of knowledge that's a lot of <coughs> materializing of our own needs of who we are we could expand everything we do everything we care about and love at this time this is a very prolific very fruitful time and just opposite on the other side to that Sun Jupiter stands Chiron the wounded healer and Chiron, as Maurice Fernandez, my teacher and the uh, president of, of OPA, the Organization for Professional Astrology, says, the reason we are so obsessed with Chiron's wound is because this is both a place in which we are ourselves are masters in, that we have amazing talents in, but we have a handicap as well. 
And this is mind-boggling to us. That we could heal other people's relationship, but find ourselves struggling in our own. That we could be making a lot of people, a lot of people, a lot of money, but we're struggling financially. That we are the uh, shoemakers that actually prefer to go barefoot, that can't handle shoes on their feet, but still can make and produce the most exquisite shoes for others. And teach people how to make shoes. <coughs> so I hope you understood me and my analogies. <laughs> so that's this Tuesday for you. And working with that pain, working with that sense of feeling finite, working with the fact that we are limited and imperfect can produce great understandings that talk about the exact line between things that we should push forward towards, that we should make sure that come into our life, that are part of our life, that are part of our relationships, and things that we should really give up on and learn to compromise on and learn to let go and disattach from. And exacting that exact border, both in our relationships with ourselves, with other people, and with our life. This is what this work is all about. Wednesday, the 21st, already much calmer. And it's not lethargic it's in any way. It's very energetic, but it's a calm, harmonious, sustainable energy. And if I'd want to start something new that's going to go on for a long time, I'd do it on Wednesday. <clears throat> Thursday the 22nd the sun moves into uh, um, Sagittarius happy birthday I'm sorry I just need a bit a sip of something because I'm my throat here is mm, mm, this coffee is so good it makes me want to scream ah now I scream So, <clears throat> so the 22nd is much more sustainable as well. And the sun moves into Sagittarius. Happy birthday, all you Sagittarians. And it really continues that trend of optimism, of self-belief and belief in my own way and my own truth and my own righteousness. And on the negative side of that Jupiterian, uh, influence that <coughs> Sagittarian influence we could be too sure of ourselves too extravagant too proud not have enough tact uh, not uh, be or, or be too extravagant and not discreet enough and take too much upon our shoulders with a feeling of omnipotence thinking that we could take care of everything and everyone only to find out that we are very limited, our time is very limited, and our power and energy is very limited, and that we can break down if that expansion is not sustainable. If it is, however, this can be a wonderful time for growth. And Thursday the 22nd has all that ingredients of power and strength that come from within that are needed to handle challenges in our lives. And it's packed of energy. It's packed with energy. And Friday is as well because it's a full moon. Saturday is going to be like that as well. It's a full moon. We're going to jump out of our chairs on that full moon. So much energy in the sky. And <clears throat> on the one hand, a very optimistic picture is painted in the sky by the moon the sun the moon and the sun are opposing each other every full moon this full moon is in gemini again talking about ideas speech communication interaction with our surroundings learning educating 
and on the other side of that axis, in Sagittarius, stands the sun. All this axis is an axis of philosophy, is an axis of belief, is an axis of learning and higher learning, is an axis of great wisdom and a lot of information. The right information, hopefully. <coughs> and who are the planets that rule Gemini and Sagittarius? Well, Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter and Gemini rules uh, is ruled by Mercury. So both of the ruling planets join the Sun opposing the Moon. Mercury and Jupiter join the Sun. They're all together opposing the Moon. There could be so much energy, so much expansion, so much knowledge, so much understanding, so much new wisdom that is gained, but not everything is optimistic. Squaring the sun and the moon stands Mars, the god of war, the lone warrior that struggles, and this time it's in Pisces. It struggles with the collective. These are struggles of the collective, on a collective level. It's, these are struggles that are all-inclusive, that are part of the universe. These are dangers that are, are part of the natural system, of, of nature itself, of the world. This is about struggling with something that is so much more vast than you and I am. With something that is unforeseen, uncontrollable. It's about understanding that we brought ourselves to a point in which we have no control over anything. We came to a point in which we don't know really what's coming around the bun, around the bend, around the bun too, you know. If it's a nice bun, it can be coming around the bun, around the bend. So, <clears throat> that feeling of losing control, that feeling that my personal actions don't count for anything in this oceanic vastness, immeasurable uh, uh, um, struggle, in a sense. The feeling of losing one, one owns power could be great, so much so that it could lead to depression or even suicidal thoughts in extreme cases. When we are faced with the fact that our truth, that our way, that our wisdom is finite, is not perfect, and can not really control or influence the problems that we are facing on a global, natural, ecologic level, collective level. But dealing with these problems, and Mars in Pisces can deal by taking those urges and, and personal wants and needs and, in a way, canceling them out for the greater good. In a way, <clears throat> getting up some of my needs and wants for the collective, for the higher cause, for the ideal, for uh, uh, the spiritual benefit of it. And we can act as a collective in spiritual ways when Mars is in Pisces. So that's the full moon for you. Saturday the 21st, still a lot of energy in the air. The moon is still in Gemini. So in one way, we want to do a lot of things that Saturday. But the moon is also squaring Neptune. So there is a kind of liturgy and there is a kind of sensitivity. So 
I would go just to do a lot of fun. I wouldn't work on that Saturday. I wouldn't do anything con uh, concerned with my left brain. Not too much math <laughs> or, or uh, nothing that is too hard. Just a lot of things that are fun. If you want to see some meteors, there's the Leonid meteor shower coming up on the 17th and the 18th. It's going to be seen coming from the constellation Leo, but meteors <coughs> usually can <coughs> come from all sorts of directions in the sky. And the best place would be somewhere that doesn't have a lot of light pollution and is dark. And probably after the moon is set, which would be after midnight. So that's about everything I had to tell you. Um, if you are in Israel, come to the OPA evening I'm, I'm, uh, I'm erecting here on the 17th. It's a free entrance and we're going to have three wonderful lectures. Um, come and have a beer or a coffee with us. And if you're interested in studying with me, new groups coming up in December. Thank you for sharing this. Thank you for commenting. And thank you for everything. Have a beautiful week. May we all live long and prosper on the name of Georgia and myself. I hope to see you again in one of our next fights. Goodbye.